Hey everybody, I'm back in Hong Kong and this is my review of the Honor V30 Pro. So I've been using this phone for about 20 days now from Hawaii all the way back to Los Angeles and then now back here in Hong Kong. So I'm gonna keep this review short because a lot of the stuff I said about the Huawei Mate 30 Pro also applies to the Honor V30 Pro. They're very, very similar devices. So they have the exact same main camera. So that's big news for the Honor V30 Pro because this is a relatively affordable device. It sells for under $400 in China and I think it's going to launch in Europe very soon for probably like $550. So you do pay a little bit of a markup in Europe but hey, you get that global ROM which is a lot better than the China ROM that's running on here. But anyway, so all right, I'm back in my apartment. I have wanted to shoot the entire review out on the streets as I'm walking. But man, after spending a month in Hawaii and California, coming back to Hong Kong, it's an assault on your senses. Like my body just could not get used to how many people was on the streets. It'll probably take me like a couple of days to get used to the crowd again. So I was like, you know what? Forget the crowd. I'm coming back home. So anyway, let's talk about the hardware of the Honor V30 Pro. So this is overall very premium hardware that in almost every aspect can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best phones out there. The only part of the hardware that falls short of a premium flagship phone is that this panel, it's an LCD panel and it's completely 100% flat. Whereas, you know, nowadays on all flagship phones, we get OLED panels that are curved on the sides. Or even if they're not drastically curved, they're a little bit curved. Like even on an iPhone, which you would think have a flat screen, the, the sides are actually curved a little bit. That's why when you run your hand through the phone, it actually feels pretty smooth. Whereas on these mid-tier Chinese phones, when you run your hand through the phone, they tend to have a little bit of a sharp edge right here. But hey, considering the price of this phone, this is a minor, minor nitpick. So this screen, even though it's LCD, it looks gorgeous. Like you see, viewing angles are excellent. Outdoor visibility is good. And the colors are very vibrant and very punchy. You have a hole punch display right here housing two selfie cameras. You have a 32 megapixel main camera and then an eight megapixel wide angle camera. Now the wide angle camera, you need really good sunlight to take usable selfies. If you're in indoors or like under dim setting, you're going to get very mushy selfies that, you know, it's still usable, but it just doesn't look that good as you see right here. Now around the back, this is glass, but it's matte coating. And I like this. See, it does not attract fingerprints and it's still relatively grippy. It doesn't slide off my hand that easily. I think all phones should use matte coating now instead of this kind of shiny glossy finish that looks good out of the box for like two seconds and then it looks really nasty with all the smudges and fingerprints it's like right here now you have a triple camera system here this is what honor calls the matrix camera system it's headlined by a 40 megapixel f 1.6 sensor this is virtually the exact same lens as seen in huawei mate 30 pro which is awesome because Huawei Mate 30 Pro is a flagship camera that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the iPhone and Google Pixel as the best cameras on the market. Now down here, it's an eight megapixel telephoto zoom lens. This allows you to get three times loss of zoom, 10 times hybrid zoom, and 30 times digital zoom. And as you can see here, even at 10 times hybrid zoom, it still looks very clean, sharper than the 10 times zoom on the iPhone 11 Pro. And the 30 times digital zoom is very impressive considering this price point. Now, of course, the 30x zoom on the Huawei P30 Pro or the Oppo Reno 10x zoom is still going to be better, but still, for a $400 phone to get 30x zoom to be able to zoom like this is still highly, highly impressive. Now, the wide-angle camera of the Honor V30 Pro has all the pros and cons of the wide-angle camera of the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. So first of all, the pros is that even though you're shooting wide-angle images, there's virtually no distortion and details are still very sharp. In fact, generally speaking, when you're taking a standard image like this or a wide angle image, you're not losing any details at all. Now, this is an anomaly. On most other smartphones, like the Galaxy Fold or iPhone 11 Pro, when you shoot pictures with a wide angle camera and then you shoot with a standard camera, you're gonna see significant loss of details on the wide angle image. Not so for the Honor V30 Pro. In terms of sharpness and clarity and just dynamic range, it's very similar between the main camera and the wide angle camera. This is the same strength of the Mate 30 Pro's wide angle camera, which is even better because this is a 40 megapixel sensor lens. So this is 12 megapixel, it's a little bit of a downgrade, but not too much. Now as for the cons, the field of vision of the wide angle lens on the on the V30 Pro just is not that wide. Like you see, this is one X and this is wide angle. And you see it really, you're not getting that super wide, ultra wide field of vision you would get 
from something like a Samsung Galaxy Fold or an iPhone 11 Pro. Now on the Galaxy Fold, check it out when you go wide. Like you get so much more, right? But at the same time, the image is a little bit distorted. The perspective changes a little bit. It does not look natural. But when you're taking wide angle images on the Automate 30 Pro, you're still getting something that's very sharp and you know does not resemble a wide angle image. So inside this phone is a Kirin 990 with 8 gigs of RAM. So yes, these are the exact same hardware components as seen in the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. So this is why the Honor V30 Pro is such a damn good deal. This phone on the right costs a thousand dollars. This phone costs 400 or 500 bucks depending on where you are. And you're getting the exact same chipset, the exact same main camera. You only fall short in a couple of things like screen and also the wide angle camera and the zoom lens. But for the most part, this is a very capable phone. Oh. There is no in-display fingerprint sensor in this phone. Instead, you have a side-mounted fingerprint sensor right here that doubles as a power button. So it's clicky, it's a power button. And the fingerprint sensor works flawlessly every single time. And you don't have to press into it. Just place your finger on it and it unlocks. Oh, and also this phone is 5G ready. And it's not just the standard 5G that you get from say the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. This is dual mode 5G because Huawei is the biggest telecommunications company in the world. They make 5G networks for probably like half of the world right now. So that explains why Huawei was able to put dual mode 5G modems into this phone at such an affordable price range when even the Samsung Galaxy Fold, which the one I have right here, it's a 5G phone, but it is not dual mode. So this phone can connect to more 5G bands right now than this phone on the right. So for 400 bucks, 500 bucks, you're getting a hell of a lot for your money. So as I said, there are a lot of similarities between these two phones. But unfortunately, one of the biggest shortcomings of the Mate 30 Pro also applies to the Honor V30 Pro. You already know what that is. The Honor V30 Pro does not ship with Google Apps and you cannot install them manually unless you do some backdoor hacks, which I do not recommend. So if you're just an average user who are not used to rooting your phone, who's not used to opening back doors and just really geeky shit, you're not gonna be able to run Google Apps on this phone. Now as you can see, I still download a Chrome and it works fine. And I'm on YouTube right now, YouTube on Chrome runs fine too. And if you use Gmail, Huawei's email app actually supports Gmail too. So you can run Gmail on this phone perfectly fine using Huawei's email app. But you won't be able to install Google Maps on this. You won't be able to install YouTube, the app on this. So it's up to you whether or not you want to put up with this. And um, yeah, Instagram works fine. Twitter works fine. Facebook works fine too. Everything else like WhatsApp, all that works fine. So really you're only losing Google Maps, YouTube, the app, and like Google Drive, Google Docs. But again, you can access Google Docs on the web browser if you want. Now speaking of YouTube, since we're in here, we got to do a video speaker test. Now unfortunately, this phone only has a single bottom fine speaker. So you see, you can muffle the sound really easily. But overall, the speakers do get very loud. Okay, so now let's look at the software. So this phone runs Android 10. This is the AOSP Android open source project version of Android 10. And it's skinned with Honor software called Magic UI. Magic UI is, to be honest, very similar to Huawei's EM UI for the most part. All the app icons are very similar and even comes default with Huawei's App Store. So it's not Honor's App Store. Huawei's App Store is what Huawei and Honor is hoping to replace the Google Play Store moving forward. To be honest, it's not quite there. But if any company has the resources to get there eventually, Huawei slash Honor is that company. So outside of that though, the software experience is going to be virtually exactly the same as previous Honor and Huawei devices from the last few years. Like you swipe from the sides to get this little uh, page right here with shortcuts and, and news and all of that. And then if you want to bring down notification shade, you have to swipe from the top. If you swipe from the middle, you bring up this system-wide search. The swipe navigation is pretty intuitive. It's just like Android 10, just like the iPhone. Swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to go into Apple Overview. You see animations are relatively smooth. And then to back out or something you just swipe from the sides to go back you can swipe from either side so i don't have any major complaints with the ui overall but this is a china version of the phone 
So it comes with a hell lot of bloatware, like ten cent reader, uh, right here. All these, all these are bloatware. Now the good news is you can uninstall them, but it's still annoying that when you get the phone out of the box, there's like twenty of these apps. But that's just how people in China like the phone. So the good news is if you're buying the European version of this, you won't get any of these apps. You will still have a little bit of bloatware, but not as much. Okay, let's dig deeper into the camera. So as I mentioned, I've been using the V30 Pro for like two weeks so I'm taking a lot of photos on this phone this is just like the Mate 30 Pro highly versatile and very very capable particularly the zoom system for a phone at this price range it's excellent so this is a shot from my girlfriend's cousin's place in Maui Hawaii so I'm gonna try I'm gonna zoom into this sign right here so this is the view from where I'm standing from the patio this is a wide-angle image too excellent right so now this is 10 times zoom I mean, check out how far I was able to get in there. 10 times zoom, and then 30 times zoom. Now, this 10 times zoom is sharper than the 10 times zoom on the iPhone 11 Pro, and then the 30 times zoom, the iPhone 11 Pro can't even get this close. I mean, look at this. You can actually read the sign all the way from out here. That's just insane. Now, dynamic range is also excellent. I purposely took these photos of my friend's dog against backlight like the sun is shining from the back window into the lens so really if your camera isn't good the dog's face would be completely drenched in shadows but instead these are very usable shots dynamic range on this phone it's excellent this phone's main camera has a large sensor size and kudo so dynamic range on this is excellent likely because huawei's image processing is really good and also this phone's image sensor size is just larger than any other phone at this price range all right so here's another example this is from my friend's apartment i noticed a gecko right there so without moving i just went to 30 times zoom and i got a pretty detailed image of this gecko up close now when you zoom in you'll see a little bit loss of details but hey ultimately this is a 30x zoom now this phone can take macro images too. So later on when the gecko clamped onto my friend's hand, I was able to get this picture. I mean, you can see the details of her hand and then also the details and scaling of the gecko. This is pretty impressive. I can probably get closer too, to be honest, but I didn't want to startle the little thing. Here's another macro image of my mouse. You can see the texture of the left mouse button very clearly. Now, as I mentioned, the selfie camera is only okay at night. Now, this is a standard image with a 32 megapixel sensor. Now, this is the wide angle image. You see, it becomes a mess. Like, there's like not much details in the face, not much details in all our faces, really. And the lighting in the back is a little bit blown out. Like, you see right here, this is just a mushy photo. I mean, it's usable. You can post this on Instagram. It's not going to be terrible, but it's just there are better selfie cameras out there. So video stabilization is pretty good too, as I already covered in my hands-on of this phone. So this is in Maui, beautiful Hawaii. You see I'm walking and stabilization is pretty good. Obviously the iPhone 11 Pro has better stabilization, but you can't really compare it to that phone. That's the king. For a mid-tier phone, this stabilization is pretty legit. Now jumping into the camera app, this camera app, it's virtually exactly the same as the camera app in the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. When you cycle through the apps, you see you have really large fonts telling you the mode. Honor did add a couple of additional features because you know Honor tries to be a brand for young people, so to speak. So they added some of the fun stuff, like an AR lens right here, which basically gives you like a filter. And then also this cut in is pretty fun. So you can apply effects for example, I think there's one that's like raining, so you can make it rain or something. See, so right here, you can make it appear to be raining. So if you go into more, you'll see more shooting modes, including dual view. Dual view, to be honest, I don't find it that useful, but it's a showcase of the Kirin 990's impressive powers, because you need a lot of co computational power to pull this off. You can basically shoot a video using both camera lenses, the main lens and the telephoto zoom lens. So you can zoom in here right to 5.3 times zoom while keeping this video at 1x and you can walk around and shoot something I don't know you can get a whole group right here while zooming into one person in particular on the left again these are not essential features but they're nice to have especially for a 400 to 500 dollar phone so overall the Honor V30 Pro it's an impressive handset especially at this price range 
but ultimately you have to decide can you handle the fact that this phone cannot run Google at least without doing some type of hack if you're okay with that then for 400 or 500 bucks you're getting a really powerful phone with a really capable camera and 5G connectivity now chances are where you live you don't have 5G yet but this phone is future proof so that means even 2021 2022 when you get 5G this phone will be ready to go you have an all screen design that looks excellent and I think just overall this phone it's very premiumly constructed but ultimately it comes down to whether or not you can deal with the Google issue and that's something we're gonna have to deal with for the foreseeable future it doesn't look like this Google issue is going to be worked out anytime soon. Okay, so that's about it for this review of the Honor V30 Pro. If you're interested in content like this, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews and here I upload a lot of photos and just videos as I travel and as I test the phone. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.